Well, we talked about it uh, Friday night, Saturday morning, last hour. Now, a lot of you might not have heard that last hour, so I've got Mel, and there's an update. It may be the deepest hole anywhere in the ground. It may go on forever, for all we know. I'll, I'll, I'll catch you up here in a moment. I received the following facts last week. Dear Art, I'm writing to you to see if I can get some help from you or your vast listening audience. I live in rural eastern Washington near the Manastash Ridge. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly now. On our property, there is a hole. Like the previous owners and the owners before them, we've been throwing our trash into the hole. Apparently, the hole has been there as long as anyone can remember. At first, I thought it was an ancient well. Anyway, the hole is nine feet, nine inches in diameter. There is a stone retaining wall around it, and we've put a steel door on top to keep anyone from falling into it. As I said earlier, people have been throwing their trash into the well, that's in quotes here, for decades. Furniture, household trash, dead cows, building debris, you name it. The thing is, I noticed the hole never filled up, so I got curious, actually obsessed, began trying to measure the depth of the hole. I emptied three fishing reels of about 1,500 yards of monofilament trying to determine the depth. Soon I was buying fishing line in bulk. So far, I've sunk about 80,000 feet of line into the hole without reaching bottom. My wife works at a local university with a geology department. We hope to get some professional scholarly help in determining the depth of the hole, as far as I can tell. There's nothing else particularly strange about it except for... Two other things. Dogs refuse to get within 100 feet of the hole. Birds won't sit on the retaining wall or metal door. Another strange thing is there's no echo when you yell into the hole. Indeed, I've never heard anything hit bottom when tossed in. We once tossed in an old refrigerator, and we never heard it hit bottom, no crash, splash, or crunch. I hope your listeners can help with possible explanations. I'm wondering if this, based on my measurements thus far, might be the deepest hole on earth. Signed, Mel Waters. Well, you know me. I get a fax like this, and I jump right on it. So I called Mel in the middle of the night. We put him on the air last hour of the show last week, and we got the story of Mel's Hole. But now, Mel's Hole Part 2. I get the following fax earlier today, Art. You're receiving this fax simultaneously with a fax I attempted to send you earlier today. Much has developed since the first fax. I'll try to explain as rationally as possible what has transpired since my earlier fax. Around 1 p.m., I drove to Yakima to shop at the Costco there. On my way back, I decided to stop at the property. When I got there, my access road was blocked by military personnel that were armed. I noticed that several pieces of yellow gear had entered and exited my property based on the direction of their thread. I asked one of the guards, what's going on? He said there was a plane crash on the property. I said, well, that's strange. I told him there's no smoke. I don't see any in the distance. He asked who I was, and I let him know I own the property. I then asked to talk to the officer in charge. A non-uniformed man came up to my suburban and let me know that I won't have access to my property until the crash has been completely investigated. I mentioned the yellow gear and the lack of smoke and that they were on my property. I was told by this man that it's not necessarily my property and that it would be very easy to find a drug lab on my property. Well, I got the drift. I asked if I could leave. He said, sure, don't come back until we contact you. I asked if he wanted a way to contact me. He said, they know how to contact me. I said, I suppose you don't want me to talk to anybody about this. He said, nobody would believe it anyway. That's about it for now. Oh, I talked to one of my neighbors earlier today, and he told me something very interesting. He said that some time ago, he was driving up to the hole at night and thought he saw the most bizarre thing. He said he saw a beam of solid black coming out of the then-uncovered hole. I said, what do you mean? 
He said he saw something blacker than black coming out of the hole, like a searchlight reaching into the sky as far as he could see. So there you have it. There, there actually is more. Here is, uh, from the state of Washington, uh, here's Mel. Mel. Hello, Art Bell and listeners. Hi. Um, you, when, 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 when I got this second fax from you, I called you up, and you were totally, totally freaked out. Oh, my God, I was. I tell you, I was, I, 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 I feel a lot better now, let me tell you, but, uh. Yeah, you were, you were uh, just a pile of nerves when I talked to you. Now, what, what Explain again. You you went up to your property. You were going to examine the hole because we were talking about. It. I'm sure you yeah. have the interest. So, and they stopped you there, huh? Yeah. Well, I uh, originally uh, my uh, after, after the show on Friday night, I went out there and uh, uh, in the evening and uh, noticed uh, there was some some helicopter activity around the property. Uh, there was further helicopter activity the next day, uh, and so I figured that uh, clearly uh, somebody out there listens to your program. Oh yes. And uh, I think. Uh, John, I'm really sorry I brought this on for you. I, I didn't. It certainly wasn't intentional. I. Uh... Well, uh, you know, uh, when we talked yesterday, uh, you felt that. Uh, Probably the best thing to do is to uh, be public in this matter. And That's I, uh, right. Your best uh, protection is to be public, Mel. Well, anyway, so there was was a lot of activity around there, and you know I've had some thoughts about this. And if they knew where the hole was, uh, I would imagine that they could take some readings of the depth of the hole from like satellites. I don't know about that. I, I, I'm sure they have a way to measure it from ground. I'm not sure about satellites. Well, we, we did have a lot of hovering up there in the air, I'll tell you that. <laughs> so uh, uh, we, we did have that situation. Um, and they stopped you, right? In other words, there was a barrier there? Well, there was on, um, I, I tell you, I'm getting a little confused about days. I, I guess it's now Tuesday morning. Yeah, that's right. But um, uh, since... What they had originally there was a barrier, not a barrier, but just armed armed uh, soldiers, basically. Armed soldiers. Armed soldiers. Uh, since then, they have erected some um, further down the road. I mean, you can't even, I, I mean, basically, there's the road, there's the access road, and then finally kind of meander into the property. Okay. They now have jersey barriers at the road. What are those? Uh, jersey barriers. Those are... Uh, they're kind of like big chunks of concrete. That, oh, that uh, like should... like the bomb barriers they have at the White House. Uh, more or less. So you could you could squeeze maybe one one vehicle through there, but it's uh, you know definitely being controlled over there. Now this is your property, right? You've this got the is, deed to this property. This is well mine in the banks. <laughs> well, you're you're in the bank. You know, we're all in the same situation. Um, so so they won't let you on your own property, and they're claiming there was a plane that crashed. Yeah, that, that was the thing. And I said, well, where's the smoke? I've seen plane crashes before. There's, there's got to be smoke. And uh, you know, again, I had talked. I asked to talk to the officer in charge there, and uh, I figured, you know, one of these military types that come up, and I don't know, maybe he was just dressed in civilian clothes because of, you know the nature of what happened there. But yeah. uh, you know, uh, you know, he told me that I won't be able to go out there until the uh, accident's been investigated. Mm. And I was insistent about my property rights, and he seemed to indicate that uh, this might not necessarily be my property in regards to the drug lab. So, uh, uh, but the problem is, I do have, uh, I do have a sort of a lab on the property. But oh no, no, wait a minute! Ooh, yep. ooh, 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 you have a sort of lab. What kind of lab? Well, I, um, I, I work uh, or working in the alternative health field here and then on, on the property, and that's one of the reasons, and this can all come out now, uh, I invo imported some um, plant life from northern Nevada. They were Native American plants that the Indians used there for uh, uh, treatment of various illnesses, mostly cold and flu. Yeah. Anyway, so we, uh, because of the nature of the uh, uh the climate and is very similar to northern Nevada. We thought we would cultivate these plants and then use it as a cure. It's a very effective cure. It's, found, uh, it's not a narcotic, is it? No, it's not narcotics. Well, not then what the hell are they talking about drug lab? 
Well, there is a lab there, though. I mean, and uh, well, yeah. Oh, yeah, but there's no, there's no. You're not cranking out crank oh. or methamphetamine or anything. Yeah, but if they had, for instance, if they found like it was a drug lab, they could seize my property. So it was their way of telling you, yeah. listen, brother, stay away. Let us do what we're doing. Or, you know, we might find a drug lab here, and then it wouldn't exactly. be your property anymore, and you might even be in jail. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, yeah. So they were clearly letting me know, and my feeling was that they were in control. So uh, what have we got? Good. We got some kind of national security hole now, or is it what? Well, I'm, <laughs> excuse me, I, I, I assume by now they've made a lot of determinations about it, and it sounds like it's something they want. Today on my uh, my answering machine, I had a message from my real estate agent. Oh, and he says that uh, he had uh, someone who is very interesting and interested, rather, in purchasing my property and uh, would make me a very generous offer. Now, I haven't gotten back to him, but uh, I think we can put two and two together here. Somebody wants to get their hands on my property. So what are you going to do, Mel? Are you going to accept the, quote, generous offer and, uh, and get out of this with your skin intact and a few bucks, or are you going to, you're going to fight? Well, that's a good question. That's one of the reasons why I didn't get back to my uh, my agent today. You know, is that I wanted to sit down and think about it before I did anything. I don't know what their so-called very generous offer is, but on one side you have a possible drug lab, and on the other side you have a very very generous offer. And so I would kind of be curious to know what their generous offer was. Well, that's the carrot stick approach, no question about it. Yeah, they're, they're, they're working the both ends here, I think. And uh, I'm, uh, you know, like I say, I, I feel a lot, a lot calmer about this now than I did before. It was. It was now, you were almost panicked, weren't you? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, it, uh, it, it was, it was just a little bit too much. All right, you, you did some measurements. People were asking yeah. about, people were asking about the weight of the line that you were putting into the, into the hole. And so, what have you determined? Yeah, I, I did, I did some uh, real, real quick and dirty work here with this. Here, first of all, uh, when I was out there on the weekend, I was able to actually measure or, or weigh the line that's in the hole. And basically, I tied it onto one of these little. Uh, uh, fisherman's scales, okay? And, All right. Uh, you know, it's 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 a little spring-operated thing there, but I I had a weight on that, including the uh, uh, the one-pound sinker on there. It looks like it weighs about uh, 17, 18 pounds. What what does uh, the line that's in the hole? In totality? Yeah, the oh. entire the entire weight of the line. Basically, the line weighs 10 ounces for every hundred. Every thousand yards. Okay, so 17 or 18 pounds. Yeah. It's 20 pound test line, right? Mm -hmm. And you have got one pound down at the end of it, tied on the end of it, right? That's right. So, so one of the things is it's it's and and this has become a moot point at this point. But it uh, if I drop much more line down there, and based on what your caller said, this this line will break <laughs> at. Uh, Probably at the top of the line because that's where all of the pressure will be. So but you the... believe you're down eighty thousand feet? Yeah, yeah, w without a doubt. Eighty thousand eight, feet. Eight with uh, what is that? Four zeros on there. Well, so miles five thousand two hundred and eighty feet. So yeah, you can that's that from there. Uh, so, someone's. I, I believe I haven't done done the math math on there. I always forget how long a mile is. But uh, um, how long have you owned this property with a hole? We've had the property for about four years now, and. Uh, you know that the guy that had it there had had been there for a long time. I believe he'd been there for over forty years. Uh, it's 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 very rustic. I, I think I might have indicated to you we we do not have electricity there. We do not have phone service. No, it's just raw property, right? Uh, well, we we have our we have some buildings and the housing structures. All of those were uh, basically damaged with the uh, the heavy snow. Mel, um, a lot of this audience would not have heard. But there was another little bit of the legend of the hole. Um, apparently, at, at some point, somebody threw a dead dog into the hole, right? Oh, yeah. I was telling you about that before the other night. And, uh, yeah, it, it, people put throw everything in there. There's dead cows going down the hole. There's, you know, sheep, whatever. You name it, it's gone down there. One guy uh, threw his old hunting dog down into the hole, I guess, as a form of burial. And... Uh, the story that I heard was that the guy, the hunter, was out there hunting one day, and he saw his old departed dog. It looked exactly the same. In fact, it was wearing the same collar and the same uh, tags on it. So he was absolutely, the story is, they were like absolutely 
believe the dog came back somehow. And you believed it to the degree that you changed your will so that when you die, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they were going to throw your body into the hole, right? When, when I'm gone, I'm, I go into the hole. Oh, well, but maybe not now, huh? Well, that, that's a matter for conjecture. I, uh, today, I, I, I didn't have a chance to mention this. I, uh, uh, you know, after, after finding out, you know, the story about the, the black beam, you know, I, uh, the other night, day, I, I, I thought I'd go out there and do some more research amongst the, my, my neighbors who, you know, may have, uh. That makes sense. You can't go on the property, might as well talk to the yeah, neighbors. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And so, you know, you go out and buy them a cup of coffee and find out a few things here. Anyway, I had, uh, I talked to one gentleman who's uh, really quite elderly and has lived in the uh, area for a long time, but he said that originally, and this is going way back, so this must go back about 40, 50, maybe longer, that there was a series of, around the hole, there was a series of stone columns. I said stone columns. and Stone, uh, co stone columns? Yeah. What? And so I asked him, you know, could he like, you know, you know, I sketched out a little how the property looks there and see if he could place the uh, stone columns on it. Yeah. So, you know, he drew it on a napkin there, and I said, that's very interesting. Well, I had my, my uh, power book with me, and I uh, pulled up a picture of Stonehenge. Yeah. And he says, that's exactly what the thing looked like. You're kidding. He said that they had these, like, pillars lined up, you know, and just like that. He said it wasn't, you know, it didn't have that thing on the top, you know, the, they had some, like, things on top of the pillars of Stonehenge. Oh, but, that's really odd. Listen, but, 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 yeah, you can't get photographs, Mel. I'm sorry to interrupt, but uh, y y I asked you about photographs. They right. won't let you close enough to take any photographs. Uh, I was I was afraid to take pictures of the guards, to be honest with you. No, I, I, I understand. I, How about a drawing, Mel? Can you get us a drawing? Uh, yeah, I could I could do that. Uh, and and uh, I, I, had a, I had a question for you. you, you uh, the night that I talked to you, you said you got another fax about an, another anomalous hole. That's right. Colville area? Oh, that's right. That's yeah. exactly right. I've got that fax. Um, and, and I'll try and get to it. But okay. Uh, uh, on Sunday, I listened to your show a bit, and uh, you had Linda, Linda on talking about HARP. That's right. Project HARP. Now, now HARP is supposed to look for... Underground, underground bunkers and ground. tunnels and such, yes. That's right. Now, uh, maybe it's looking at your hole. Who knows? Here, here's a fax for you. The following is a theory regarding Mel's property. One. Imagine two naturally occurring iron veins just happening to reach toward the Earth's surface around Manas... Uh, help me pronounce it. Manastash? Manastash. Uh, Washington. There is a tremendous amount of naturally generated high-voltage electricity deep in the Earth. What if the bottom of the hole on Mel's property is a naturally occurring focal point, a lot like the device that Mr. Markham built? The Earth could have its own, in effect, time machine over the centuries through various quakes and so forth all of the soil above the portal would have fallen into the bottom and been launched into some other time. This explains the lack of echoes in the apparent depth of the hole. Tell Mel to lower a clock down there. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah. well, well, let me tell you, I was uh, over at the university library today, and you know, I wanted to find out a little bit more about Earth geology. Uh, and one of the things I found out is the crust, on average, on the Earth is about 20 miles deep. Okay. Now, underneath the crust, and this is something that a lot of people don't know about, there's something known as the MOHO discontinuity. The, the what? The MOHO, M-O-H-O discontinuity. What is that? It's named for a guy named uh, Mohorovic. He was a, a Croatian uh, seismologist. But I don't know much about seismology, but I'll tell you what I know about this discontinuity. P waves, and I guess those are seismic waves, yeah. Through this discontinuity, move faster than they do through the rest of the Earth. They like speed up. Okay. Normally they go like seven kilometers per second. These are going like eight kilometers per second when they go through there. And it's believed that it has to do with a chemi chemical difference in the type in, in that area of the Earth. So you've got the crust, you have the uh, Moho discontinuity, then you have the mantle. And so that region is very very little known, as you can well imagine, because you really can't get to it, uh, at least not yet. <laughs> and uh, uh, they really, the, the scientists really don't understand that, but we have this thing that goes on underneath the crust that is very, very peculiar. 
and uh, I just thought I might mention that. There. All right. Uh, well, I don't know anything about that. That's very mm-hmm. interesting. All I know is we had all kinds of cool plans. I mean, we were going. I had Mel. I'm telling you, I've got volunteers who are willing to go down in your hole, but now, now that's obviously not going to occur uh, because. They have your hole. I mean, this is outrageous. This is your property. Yeah, it is my property. That's 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 the uh, the incredible thing. I could not step one inch onto my property. You know, it, it, my my deepest um, incursion only got me onto the access road. I mean, I still got. I mean, I, I mean, I was kept way away from that thing there. How far is it from the access road where you were stopped to the hole? Oh gosh, you, you'd have to travel. Oh gosh, I, I would say it's from the access road. Kind of, it, it's very hilly ground over there, so you kind of have to go around all the low spots there. You might go about a mile and a half or more. You, you can't even see uh, the little like valley that I'm in. Before you began dropping this monofilament line into the hole with a weight, uh, you threw an entire refrigerator down. Yeah down this hole, and then listened and listened and listened and never heard a thing? Nothing. Nothing. I, you know, I mean, again, you know, the, the refrigerator, I didn't hear anything. I mean, I expected, you know, I mean, something that massive, you know, and that, that, that uh, you know, I expected something. But, I, you know, I've thrown things there that I knew would make interesting sounds, like television tubes, picture tubes. Yeah, they explode. Yeah, those, those are my favorite. And, uh, no, I, I couldn't get an exp- implosion, explosion, or anything out of them. So I have not heard anything actually touch bottom in that thing. Um, I mean, that's, uh, it's almost impossible, uh, it seems. Um, I, I uh, you know, I mean, if, if the hole right now, I don't know, is 15, 16, 17 miles, you know, how long would it take for the sound to travel back, you know, if it, it is hitting bottom? Let's say it's hitting bottom at, say, 15 miles. Uh, you know, how long would it take, or would I hear it at all? You know, th- those are things, I, you know, I don't know. I mean, those I don't are... think so. I mean, you don't hear things that occur. F- well, on the other hand, though, it's a channeled... It sure is. I, I don't know the physics involved in such a deep hole. Have, have you ever heard of any other holes? Uh, no. Uh, you know, that's why I was curious about the uh, Colville hole. I, I did find out that actually the deepest mine is like 2.3 miles into the earth. So this is way, way beyond anything that uh, anybody's ever heard about. Yeah, but that, that's a mine. That's you know that's a, a mine structure. It, uh, another thing I was curious about was that channel that, that they built underneath the uh, English Channel. Oh yes, England, yes, yes. England yes. and France. How deep yes. is not not how deep it is, but how long is it? You know, is it is it several miles or? Uh, I, I almost uh, rode on it. It's funny you should mention. I almost rode on it last time I was. Uh, uh, in uh, in London, um, but but I didn't, so I, I don't exactly know. I saw the entrance to it. <laughs> I rode right by the entrance to it. I, I would be leery of going into that thing. Well, then you certainly wouldn't want to go in. Would you go in this hole, your uh, hole, if you could? I anticipate what will be going down into the hole in the future will be federal prisoners, I, I imagine. <laughs> we will be going down there on a non-voluntary basis, I assume, because... Uh, uh, I mean, these, you know, if, if we're talking the government here, which it is obviously the government that's been interested in this, they have every piece of technology they could ever want. They could send down cameras. They could send down whatever they wanted, you know. So, you know, I assume at some point if they determined that it was safe for a human being to go down, they'll send a, a person down, you know, and they take air readings, if it's got good air, bad air, you know, find out what's going on. Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that that you know they they would do that. You know, I, I again I'm you know just like a you know poor ordinary little guy here who doesn't have a lot of technology as back. Well, how well. would you like to get a whole bunch of citizens together, Mel, and yeah. and go marching on that property and challenge their authority to uh, to take your property like that? Well, we we talked we talked about that over coffee with the, the guy that told me uh, about the. The stones out there, you know, saying, you know, I mean, you know, we're we're pretty. What's uh, we're big on property rights here. Yeah, this is your property. hole, not theirs. And and uh, you know, we're I mean, you know, very very militant about that. And they say, you know, how how can they do that here? Uh, the you know, the truth is, you know, if they say a plane crashed on the property, yeah, and and I I, I don't have any evidence of that, but I mean, you know, I expect to see some smoke. 
But, uh, you know, uh, if they're telling people this is a, an accident scene, we've got to do an investigation, you know, FAA and all that business there. And, and all right, did they tell you what kind of airplanes, civilian, no. military, or what? No, no. No, all right. Um, it, well, are there any reports? I mean, you, after all, you can check on plane crashes, oh, right? You, well, for, well first, first of all, over here, if a kid, kid throws a snowball at your car, yeah. in the time, that makes the mm -hmm. newspaper. <laughs> I mean, so... So there I should mean, have been big news if a plane went down oh, there. I, oh, you bet. I mean, we've had planes go down here before. I mean, we've had planes go down, you know, on the other side of the mountains and makes newspaper here. I mean, you know, that's a big deal. Here. All right, well, look, then, look, then instead of uh, a crowd of civilians, maybe that was a bad idea, how about a crowd of media? I mean, I could get Seattle media by your side and mm -hmm. go marching right up to that, that, that group, right up to the barrier. Yeah, and then then I end up being a convicted <laughs> drug drug cooker. <laughs> uh, I am, you know, but that's that's you know I. They actually said that to you. That that those those were the exact. Those were almost verbatim the exact words they said. Uh, you know, you know, you know. We could find a uh, drug lab on this property if you get my drift. Uh, you know, oh, just very God. easily. All right. Uh, yeah. Mel, let's take a few calls, see if anybody has any ideas. I, this one has me stumped. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Uh, Hello there. Y yes. Uh, <clears throat> this is Robert in Milwaukee. Hi, Robert. Hello. Uh, Art, I just, uh, just had a thought uh, connecting uh, Stephen Greer at Sea SETI uh, with what he said on concerning interplanetary travel. And uh, drew drew a connection to the cloning. Uh, I find it very interesting that the scientists say they're not going to consider cloning humans. Oh, baloney! That's trip. that's a bunch of crap. You know, don't listen to that. I, I, I excuse me for a second, Mel. On the subject of cloning, you know, all day I've been li listening to this drivel uh, from the scientists of um, about the cloning thing that we're not going to do it. Oh well, yes, uh, this technology will allow cloning, but we're not going to do it. that. Is utter garbage and when we get around to talking about cloning which we will uh we're going to talk about it in an entirely different vein because unless you are naive beyond belief spending your time talking about whether we should or shouldn't will or won't is baloney because we will i guess you can say should we huh. but we will i guarantee we're going to clone anyway uh that is not tonight's subject or the moment's subject uh mel's hole is first time Caller line, you're on the air. Hey, Mel? Yeah, hi there. Hi there. Where are you, sir? I'm in uh I'm in Oregon. My name is Pete. All right, Pete. Okay. Um uh, where in Oregon so, are you? Uh in Corvallis. Corvallis, okay, I know what that is, sure. Okay, yeah, I was listening to the show and uh, I guess it's a uh, delayed broadcast out here. I was listening to uh earlier, earlier stuff. No, no, this is about Mel's hole. Mm hmm Go ahead, sir. And uh yeah, I was I would just say to Mel that uh you need to get in contact with uh just about every media person that you can think of and uh well, and get he, him out there. He's done that with me and I agree with you. I just said to Mel that he should take, you know, like an army of cameras out there. But yeah, exactly. he's afraid that he's gonna end up in jail. Mm hmm Now, he's got a point. Well, I mean I so, think, uh, suppose the army of cameras with Mel and Toe arrive and they and there's feds there saying sorry this is a crime scene uh, oh are you is this is this a uh, uh, mel waters well you're under arrest mel well i i i i i have, I have to tell you that uh um as far as i you know what i believe is now that the uh, the, the surface of the hole there has been you know there's a lot of snow on the property has been covered up with snow mm -hmm. i think that's what the yellow gear was there for is to you know groom it all so you can't see it from there well, I and, think there's a lot of questions that need to be answered. And if, two, uh, if the military is out there, if there was a plane crash, I think uh, uh, the media would want to know uh, what kind of plane it was, uh, who was flying it. I will. Well, you see, yeah. the thing is, I'm the one that's saying that there was a plane crash. Yeah, Mel, I'll tell you something. Um, and for what it's worth, if it was a civilian airplane that crashed, that would be in the news. Mm -hmm. uh, if it was a regular military airplane that crashed, that would be in the news. But there are some type of aircraft that crash, Mel. That it, believe me, it does not make the news. We have them out here. They crash, and you see the military cordon off miles of area, and there's no news about it at all. You know, there's secret aircraft that fly and crash, but I don't think that's what happened there, and neither do you. Do you? No, I, I don't. I don't believe that anything crashed there because I, I didn't have. I mean, I didn't have the smell of the smoke. I didn't see any smoke. It was a beautiful. Uh, 
a uh, beautiful clear day. I mean, if there was any, any, and it wasn't particularly windy, if there was there was a crash, there'd be evidence of it. There'd be smoke clouds. Well, evidence. I'll tell you one thing. I would be very cautious, Mel, about accepting a generous offer for the property with a hole because, you know what, no matter what else, Mel, your hole is worth millions of dollars if it's what you say it is. If it's as deep as you say it is, man, you could, you could fence a property and sell tickets. Well, I, 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 I think I also mentioned that they actually moved onto the property several mobile, one of those like temporary buildings. Oh, they moved that onto the property. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, one of the neighbors says he saw a, like almost like a parade of these things going out there, like three, four of them, uh, plus some generator equipment there oh too. Good. How all long? That stuff. How long after the broadcast did this parade begin? Well, um, it was it was uh, Saturday, Saturday night? I was out there pretty pretty late. Um, and we I, did we did the broadcast between I think three and four o'clock Pacific time Saturday morning. Yeah, so I, I, you know, I, I got some, you know, got some sleep, you know, and I went out there, you know, in the evening and did my uh, uh, weighing of the uh, uh, the line in the hole, and that's when I saw the first helicopter out there, and uh, that was a very strange experience. Uh, you know, I I actually looked up at this thing here for about 20 minutes. You know, <laughs> um, there were more helicopters out there Saturday morning early, uh, several of them coming in and out. Uh, that was Saturday morning. Uh, that was Sunday morning, uh, and then by uh, today, uh, you know, uh, the chronology is getting getting real confusing for me. But now, yesterday, I guess, really. Yeah, yeah. That that, that I, I I lost a day in here, Mark. Uh, but uh, yeah, what they what they saw is actually some uh, mobile buildings being moved onto the property. Uh, apparently, some generators there. Again, I have no power. Or phone on the property. There, you know, we use cell phone if we need to make call, and we used to use solar out there too. Uh, well, I feel in a way guilty, Mel, um, but uh, your original facts got me going, well, and there was no way not to follow up on that. And I guess once we aired that, it was too late. It was a done deal. Well, well, you, you know, when you when you uh, when, when I originally approached approached this thing here, you know, what I wanted to do was to you know get some good ideas about the, the nature of this thing here. I, I guess I was pretty naive about it. Um, All right, you know. Mel, one thing I've got to ask you. Yeah. Um, don't think me rude, but no, it, I've got to ask, Mel. Yeah. That's not a drug lab you've got out there, is it? No, no, no. We, we are working with uh, Native American plants. They're plants that Native Americans used in making uh, what, what they... Uh, what, uh, this, uh, this was a Northern Nevada doctor uh, back in World War One time who found the cure for the flu. He gave this stuff to his... Uh, uh, the, he was a military doctor. He gave it to the people under his command. All right, Mel, uh, hold on. We're, we're going to do a break here at the top of the arrow. We'll be, be back to you. Mel uh, uh, Waters, the guy with the endless hole, is my guest. We will start taking some calls. Anybody have any advice for Mel or thoughts on all of this? Yikes. CBC in action. Back now to Mel and the dilemma of the endless hole. Mel, are you there? I am here, Art. All right. There are some people with questions. Do you have anything else you want to say? Um, just, just that uh, you know, uh, just after uh, beginning to explore this thing here, you know, with uh, the help of your audience and uh, you know, further um, uh, questioning on you know people, you know that that live around in my area here, asking them, you know, really, do you remember anything strange about uh, the hole in particular? Well, I would say a resurrected dog would be pretty yeah, good. Uh, I would, it, uh, it, you know, it, it just becomes more and more mysterious. I have no way of understanding it. I would say a darker than dark beam that seems to go straight up into the sky would be pretty strange. That, that was that. That to me was utterly, utter, utter, utterly fascinating. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, the hole itself is dark, but for it to send out darkness, you know, in, you know, into the sky, to to me was just just. I, can, I couldn't. Terrible. Yeah, I couldn't begin to explain it. I, it. I mean, it was you know the way he described it. It was just. All right, all right. Look, yeah. let's bring some people on. East sure. of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Hello, where are you? 
Hi, this is Philip in Tulsa, Oklahoma. Hello, Philip. How are you doing? Great. Love your show. Thank you. Uh, Mel, what type of work do you do for a living? Uh-huh. Well, I'm a retired person. I, uh, I get no, no criminal a... record of any kind? Pardon me? No criminal record or anything? Uh, no, no, no criminal record. I, I'm a I'd find a lawyer and get a local group of citizens and press and militia, and that's uh, a good reason why we need the militias in this country is to prevent this type of situation from happening. The government coming in, taking over your property, threatening your life. You know, I would, I would call their bluff. I don't, I, I don't see how they can... Well, that's easy to say, you know, from a distance. I'm not sure I'd call their bluff. I, I've got to be honest. Uh, it, look, if you had a property, sir, and you're trying to get on it, and they had it all roped off, and they said, go away, you know, we could I, find... I would come back with a gun. Well, and and they they haul in a bunch of then trailers. you know what you'd be you'd be a yeah. dead martyr. You take a gun up to a military. <laughs> no, I'd have airport. the press with me, and I mean I would not go at this alone. Oh, I see. Uh, you know, but to, they're not going to drag in a bunch of uh, military trailers to to examine a drug lab. <laughs> well, <laughs> you know, I, that's I, just not. I agree. Logical, I know? agree with you. I agree with you. So they're obviously after the secret of the whole. Um, uh, west of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Hi, this is Stan from San Diego. Hi, Stan. Um, I just got a question there for Mel. Um, if, there, if there was, like, any way that you could charter a plane so you can do a flyover of your property? Um, I I suppose I could do that. I mean, there is a uh, small uh, airport here in, uh, in Ellensburg, um, and I'm sure that that can be, you know, that can be arranged for. Uh, well, what I'd be interested in to know is if actually planes can fly over that area, and I suppose I can yeah. try to find that out. To get some uh, photographs. Yeah, but again, I do believe that the, the hole itself has been um, uh, covered over with, uh, with you know, the surrounding snow. They probably did a really nice job with what they brought in there of, uh, uh, you know, keeping it uh, invisible from the air. You know, that, that, that was my speculation oh. of why they brought the yellow gear out, oh. as to, uh, you know, kind of, Dress it up a little bit there, so that uh, you know anyone casually going over there wouldn't notice anything. That's just my opinion. Okay, and um, another thing is, um, I got a little assumption of why none of the animals want to go by there. Why? Um, maybe they see the apparition of the dead dog, and it's warning them not to go there. <laughs> maybe, oh. maybe. I mean, that's that's pure conjecture. Who knows? But no animals will go near it. Uh, you know, the observations I made was my dogs and other people's dogs. You know, that you know that come visit. You know, they won't won't go with the, go there. If I put them on a leash and try to drag them there, they'll dig their feet in there, and they just will not budge. You know what, Mel? I once was on a trip with my family going. To, we used to go to Florida to drive Florida in the winter, and we once got near a slaughterhouse, mm. and. Um, uh, on one of our stops, and man, I had a golden retriever, and that golden wouldn't get anywhere. He did the same thing. He dug his feet in, and I don't care how you'd pull, he wouldn't get any. He could smell the death. Well, I, when I was in college, I had a uh, brought brought from school a human skull, and I brought it home, put it on the coffee table. My cat walked into the room, and he saw that thing, and the cat literally jumped backwards yep. about eight feet. I bet when he saw that. Now, uh, how, how how did a cat know? Sense they sense these things. Yeah. Uh, there's something about it. Uh, first time caller line. You're on the air with Mel. Hello. Hey Art, this is Scott from Kirkland, Washington. Yes, sir. Oh, yes, hi, right Scott, Washington. Washington. Yeah, not only not only from Kirkland, I've only been over on my side of the mountains for a little while, but uh, born and bred in Yakima and a graduate of Central Washington University. Cool. Been in, spent a lot of time in Ellsburg. Yeah. In fact, I sat around with one of my old professors, who is one of these guys who has been living in the area for. Oh, God, forever. And he actually had told me rumors one morning over coffee, sitting in a, sitting down in a little one of the little restaurants about mm-hmm. a great big hole that uh, nobody knew the bottom of. Wow. We'd actually heard of this. This was back, oh, 1990, 1989? Mm-hmm. Sometime about in there, and we even heard that. And the one thing that it really surprises me, this guy that was saying, well, I took a gun in the media up there, what a lot of people don't realize, Art, and I think that most most people don't realize, is he lives about, oh, depending on where the hole is, between 5 and 10 miles away from one of the largest military reservations in the Pacific Northwest, possibly the western United States. 
It, it, it is okay. humongous out the there. Yakima, the Yakima Firing Center is where they did all of the training for Desert Storm. They have a bunch of satellite dishes up there that theoretically don't exist, that they use for talking to satellites that aren't there, and all sorts of things, very interesting things go on up there. And so something like this, a hole appearing within spitting distance of this military reservation, it doesn't really surprise me a whole lot that they have trucks and stuff out there in a lightning bulb. Hey, Mel, do we know how long that hole has actually been there? I mean, I, I, I can probably trace this hole back, you know, from, you know, actual recollections, you know, to it, it, for a solid 40 years before um, I got there. And, and the previous owner said it was there, uh, the, the next owner back. Uh, before that, I don't know if anyone owned the property. I suppose I could check on that to see, you know, from the, the records there if there's been any, you know, uh, uh, you know, ownership of it or was, you know, wh whatever. But uh, it, I, I can trace it back for a good solid 40 years, at least, you know, from from you know the verbatim accounts from the previous owner. Um, it, it, you know, again, I, I don't really know. I, I, w I would I would venture to say that given the nature of it that has been there for a very, very long time. I'm talking, you know, not just decades uh, there. I mean, how can this thing just be there? You know, it has to be ancient. Well, I wish you the best in figuring out what it is, and we're just going to, we're all of us local here, we're going to keep tuned in to see if there's anything uh, well, worth you, driving back across the mountains to hang out and see. Well, it, 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 you know, it, you know, I, I've just been out here for just a couple of years. I decided to retire out here and pursue, you know, my uh, mm -hmm. interest in alternative health, and right. uh, you know, it, this is what I get. <laughs> All right. Well, it's turned into a nightmare. Uh, yes, an absolute nightmare. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Uh, yeah. About that hole. Yes, sir. There was a Rod Sterling thing I saw on the TNT. I think about four years ago. He was hosting, it was like, it uh, must have been early 80s, late 70s. And uh, there were reenactments of, like, these true occurrences. Yeah. And there was a whole story about a boy. It looked like it was took place in, like, when they still rode horses or something. And uh, a boy woke up with his dog missing or something. And uh, he went looking for his dog and fell into a hole, except, you know, he didn't fall in. He hung onto the edge and crawled out and went and told his dad, and his dad went out there, and they heard noises coming out of it. Oh, God. And so the, they didn't think it was the dog making the noises because it sounded real spooky and stuff. So uh, he went to town and got a bunch of guys to go out there with him, and I guess a bunch of guys went out there, and they thought, well, let's lower a rope in, and somebody's going to have to go down on it. Sure. And uh, so the dad said, well, I'll do it since, you know, you're looking for your dog and stuff. And they lowered him down, and he made this uh, scream, uh, deadly scream. And so they brought him up, and I guess after that, they, after they brought him up, he went uh, clinically insane for the rest of his life. All right. Well, I hope you're not in any danger of going clinically insane, Mel. I hope not. Uh, but you sounded close to being discombobulated when I spoke with you. When was that? Uh, that Sunday was Sunday afternoon, I think. Was that Sunday afternoon? So Sunday evening, I, I, something like that. Yeah, yeah I, I, I was. I yeah, mean, you I called me up and you were you were just a wreck. Yeah, I, I was. Uh, I, any any uh, uh, negative, fearful emotion I had it there. I mean, I, I was I was shaking. I was sweating. I was. Uh, uh, my my body was doing things that I. I couldn't explain. It was it was uh, I was a wreck. What do you think about the idea of your not even going out, but sending the media out? Um, I you know I I could do that as in terms of you know saying I think there's something interesting going on over there, and you know send them out there, and and what I assume that'll happen is if they did go, uh, if they thought it was a valid story, they'll say look we're. Uh, uh, conducting military exercises on on this land here, and yeah. uh, there's nothing for you to see, you know. And and uh, I think that will be it. Again, this guy was real clear to me. He said, "Look," mm. I asked him. I said, "Look, I suppose you don't want me to talk to anybody about this." And he and he said, "Hey, no one's gonna believe anyway. You know, <laughs> you could you could tell them anything you want. You know, you you, you, <laughs> you know, why why are they going to believe you?" All right. Well. uh 
Uh, you know, uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Maxine in Southern California. Hi, Maxine. I am uh, very interested in the conversation that's been going on with Mel. I heard the program the other night, and, uh, you know, he's really in a big dilemma. Well, he is now. Um, and I feel somewhat responsible. But, yeah, you know, I understand that. You know, this, uh, the first thing he needs to do is get a good lawyer, somebody that's prominent like that, um, I can't really call his name, Spence from Wyoming. That's Jerry Spence. Jerry Spence, somebody yeah. like that. And uh, maybe your your listeners could do a uh, a writing to Janet Reno, the president or the vice president, on his behalf. Keep him in the background because with the power they've got, you know, they can just wrap him up and we might never hear from him again. Yeah, that's right. Um, I guess I'm going to have to stay in touch with you, Mel, to be sure that you, you don't meet some... Uh... Well, well, you know, they're, they're, they're working me from both sides here, as far as I can tell. What know. it sounds like, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, lo it looks like, uh, I, I guess it's like the Godfather. They want to make me an offer I can't refuse. Uh, uh, is, is you know, it's, it, there's a lot of armchair soldiers out there, Mel, and they're going to say, uh, what's the matter with you? You've got to get in there and fight. Tell them to go to hell. But the fact of the matter is, if I were in your situation, I might be very disinclined to fight. I might be much more inclined to take a, quote, generous offer and get out from under while I can. Hey, hey, if, if I get to, you know, if I actually get to talk to somebody in a position of authority who wants to sit down and talk turkey, and I'm not talking about my uh, real estate agent, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to, honestly, I'm going to ask for, like, a relocation to another country is what I'm going to do. Do you want you want to be sent out of the country? Yeah, I, I'd I'd like to be sent to like Australia, for instance. You know, uh, uh, like where uh, what Stan Dale is. You know, uh, be an expatriate. So yeah, some you know some place that's geologically sound. <laughs> um, you know. Yeah. Okay. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel, who's still an American at this moment. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name's Brad. I'm calling from uh, Lexington, Kentucky. Hi, Brad. Hi. Um, this. When I heard about this hole, it kind of reminded me of uh, the story with the, the hole they dug. I think it was in Europe or Scandinavia. Scandinavia, they, Scandinavia. Yeah, they lowered a microphone. Yeah, I'll tell you what. That was an Associated Press story, and they lowered a microphone in, and they heard the screaming, agonized sounds of of thousands of people in agony, they said. That was, that was an actual AP story. Now, it may have turned out to have been not true, but AP ran that story. So, uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, maybe it's the entrance to hell. I don't know. <laughs> uh, there, there's, there's no, there isn't even an echo that comes out of this. I mean, you don't even hear anything. And plus, that would, I mean, and as far as the animals not wanting to go near it, you know. Uh, yeah, know, I mean, yeah. Uh, there is that, but he says hard. there's not a sound. I mean, it's totally dead, right, Mel? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, you, I mean, unless you hit the side of the thing there when it's, when when you drop something in and it's like close to the surface, you know you hear it there. But after a certain point, you wouldn't hear anything anyway. Now, when you dropped a refrigerator in, I'm curious how you can drop a refrigerator. I, no, nine feet nine inches, pretty good size diameter. Oh, yeah. But how do you get the fridge in the middle to drop it so that you don't slam it into the sides? Well, you, you get you get like uh, one of your buddies over there, and you get it over there on its, uh, you know, so it's like leaning over on its back. And you, and you slide it over on the on the, the stone wall, and you just kind of give it a shove, and it just sort of goes straight down. Yeah, that it, makes sense. Yeah, it's it, it, it's not it's not too difficult. I mean, we we've been throwing stuff in it, you know, uh, uh, the whole of all sorts of descriptions here, and, and uh, believe me, you know, we we've done it. I mean, you know, it's uh, 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 you know, a cow is a bitty pretty big thing, <laughs> but people have gotten cows down in there, so <laughs> you just about throw anything down. Actually, there. almost disgusting. Yes. Um, in fact, uh, the bottom of the hole, if there is a bottom to the damn thing, must be truly disgusting, a mixture of horrible things of earth that should not have been thrown in there. Uh, I've got a couple of faxes here uh, that are not kind, Mel. They say this Good. man is lying. His voice is shaking so much. He's stuttering. Um, he's searching for words. He's in a bind because you're paying attention to his fable, you know, made-up story they're saying. And um, you have to come up with something that would keep you from finding out about his lie. So they, here's another one that says, Mel's hoax. Aren't you fallen for another one? Well, I am a little naive, and I, I like stories like yours, Mel, and so I do tend to go for them. Is it, I mean, do you swear 
that this is absolutely the truth? Well, look, I would have rather not have talked or called or faxed or anything in regards to this subject at all. Yeah, the people need to understand. You faxed me, but I'm the one who called you. I, I would I would have preferred, to be honest with you, to, to be there tomorrow morning letting a little more line down into the hole and uh, and just going along my merry way. And then getting you on the air stopped all that and plus put the idiots there that are there taking hold of your... Uh... You know, when you have a situation about belief and what, what do you believe in and what you don't believe in, yeah. you know, a couple of days ago... Uh, we had this guy shoot a bunch of people on the Empire State Building. That's right. The Empire State Building's been there for like 60 years or whatever. And today I heard that um, they put metal detectors on in the Empire State Building. Yeah, figures. Now, for 60 years, people believed that the Empire State Building was a safe place to be. That was belief. And in one day, people no longer believe. So beliefs change. Yeah, you know, and 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 that that's that's how I view beliefs. You know, is should they've had a, a metal detector on it for sixty years? All right, look, let me ask you this: um, you have neighbors. Mm -hmm. uh, they know about the hole. They've been there. They they've put their trash there. in it. They put their trash in it. Would any of your neighbors talk, or do you think they're scared now too? <laughs> I I'd be happy to talk to them and see if they want to talk to you. All right, and. Uh, you know, I, I'd be happy. if they want to talk. I'll fax you a phone. Fax you a phone number. That's that's great, Mel. Work on that one. Um, that's at least one other angle mm -hmm. uh, to uh, to approach this with. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Uh, where are you, please? I'm in uh, Cameron, Texas. All right, uh, gentlemen. How how wide is that hole? It's it's uh, nine and three quarters feet. Nine and three quarters feet. Nine nine feet that's nine the diameter. In, nine feet nine inches in diameter. He said. Okay, uh, Mel. Uh, to the to the library. Why don't you go tomorrow? And uh, they can network books all over the United States. And there's one called The Phantom of the Poles by William Reed. And there's one called The Hollow Earth by Dr. Raymond Bernard. Okay. And I'll guarantee you that'll open your eyes because the Earth is hollow. They've never proved the Earth is solid. And at the poles, it's totally a hole, and it's about 1,400 miles wide. And people can't see across it, and they don't realize they're going into the, into the Earth. But uh, Admiral Byrd flew 1,700 miles inside the Earth, and they shut it up. So the government's up to something here. All right. As a matter of fact, here's a fax, Mel, saying, uh, regarding the hole, it sounds to me like the government's going to take the hole and give Mel the shaft. <laughs> that, that, that is what it sounds like. <laughs> West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? Well? Another fantastic story, Art. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Um, I appreciate you taking my call. Sure. I have a friend of mine who also believes in the hollow earth story. And I've read two scriptures in the Bible, which I won't quote, because I know you don't like to talk about that. That's right. But uh, there's one it's, it's uh talks about making graven in images of things. Yeah. And that would be even things that are under the earth. And then there's a... Well, what are you driving at, though? Well, it, there are scriptures in the Bible that also allude to a hollow earth. Oh, oh, oh. And, and so there's one in Revelation that talks about there's, um, they were looking all around to try and find somebody who was worthy to open the scrolls or the seals or something, and even under the earth no one was found. All right. Mel, are you a religious uh, person? Uh, I, wouldn't, I, w I wouldn't categorize myself as a religious person. Uh, you know, and, uh, so then you don't necessarily feel there's any religious significance to the whole? Um. I'm um, starting to believe that there's some supernatural significance at all, but... Uh, uh, well, like on, 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 well, yeah, the dog part and the, and, and the other thing about the, the, the beam of the blackness, uh, that certainly would lead in that direction, but on the other hand, things that we don't understand may seem as magic. Yeah, yeah, they do, and uh, that, that's... Uh, so, you know, th those are things that I cannot understand, you know, and so... I have to say, I don't understand it. All right, look here. Do you want any help from your representative? In other words, it may be that your state senator or, or your local uh, representative, congressional representative, would help you out. And we could help you out with that, too. In other words, fight power with power. 
Uh, that's an idea from John in Redding, California, and it's not a bad one necessarily. Well, my local uh, uh, congressperson is Doc Hastings out here, and uh, you know, uh -huh. he, he is one of those guys that you know believes in uh, property rights and so forth, and so that would would be an avenue. Again, you know, this is this is an opportunity for me to gain as much information as you know I'm also disseminating, and uh, you know I'm I'm going to have to make a decision. You know, I, I, when I go in one direction or go in another direction, uh, that will be it. You know, there's not going to be a point where I could take it back. All right, well, here's another one for you to consider. I've got connections at Strange Universe, Hard Copy, all those kinds of shows. Uh, I could have those people in contact with you in two seconds flat, Mel, once you decide which way you want to go. Um, I Believe me, I can have either media power or uh, a government power uh, representation uh, to help you out here. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm, again, I'm going to have to, the, ma the main thing I have to do is decide, is this tantalizing enough for me to, to move forward and, uh, you know, say, well, I want to claim this as my own, I want to I want to deal with it on my own basis, yeah. uh, do I want to get out of it, uh, you know, do I want to get into trouble, I mean, you know, these, these are the considerations that I have here. All right, here's somebody saying, what about your local sheriff? Now... That is an idea. They're usually pretty friendly guys. Do you have a good local sheriff? Uh, we, we have a local police department here, and then uh, we have a sheriff's department. But in ter and, and they're all great. They're all wonderful people. I mean, they're, every, every last one of them is a great guy. Uh, but I don't know. I, I don't even know how I would approach this here. You know, my property is being illegally used, you know, by uh There's by no the question about it. No question about it. And you have the deed, right? You can prove this? Oh I, I can I can prove it's my property. I, I what what I what I don't know is, you know, how can the government use your property? At what point do they develop an authority to use your property? You yeah. know, let's say a plane crashed there, which is what I was told. Well then they'd have a right to uh you know salvage the plane, do whatever they're going to do. All right. And, and Let me they would establish a right to it. All right. Here's Daryl in Rancho Mirage who says, kidding aside, Mel's Hole, if in fact he is sitting on top of an access point to an extraordinary depth, he's also right on top of a whole bunch of trouble. The potential military scientific significance can go as deep as one's imagination allows. One thing is for sure. The government doesn't have this kind of response uh, uh, to retrieve an old refrigerator. I think Mel better get an attorney, presto, if he doesn't have one already. Remember, if they accuse him of a drug-related violation, they can reco that property in a flash. That, that, is, that is exactly what I believe. And again, I have something on the property. I have an old parlor trailer out there that's been gutted. And it's where I do a lot of the work I do with the uh, the plants they have, and you know I have solvents there, I have alcohol there, I have uh, drying uh, equipment out there, and um, you know it it uh, you know it would it would take them 30 seconds to to make it look like a you know a methamphetamine lab or whatever it is. I mean it it just you know it's it's already my lab. I mean that's where I do my work. I hear you. All right, mm -hmm. first time caller line. You're on the air with Mel. Hello. 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 Where are you? Hello, I'm calling from Reno, Nevada. Reno, okay. Speak up good and loud for us, huh? Okay. Uh, Art, I'm sorry, but I just feel like you've got somebody there that's uh, uh, got quite an imagination. Well, you're talking to him. So, I mean, I, I've, I've just said the same thing to him. Uh, some of the faxes that I've been receiving are saying that, obviously. People don't believe. I, I, I just hope that you don't get all wound up in this. Well, I, look, I get wound up in all kinds of things, dear. I'm not going to stop. That's what I do. Don't uh, worry about me. Oh, okay. Well, uh, I was just... Uh, but, I mean, if you, if you doubt some part of Mel's story, go ahead and say so to Mel. He's here. Mel, I, uh, I think that you're looking for some kind of notoriety for some reason, and uh, I think that you think everybody is pretty gullible that uh, is listening to Art Bell's program. And that you're uh, taking unfair advantage of him. All right, you've got to remember, dear. I called him. Uh, but didn't he originally uh, fax me? You yes, for he help? did. Uh, well, uh, he faxed me with information. I read, as a matter of fact, I read the fax at the beginning of the program uh, with Mel tonight, and uh, I read it over the air. So uh, the, 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 he didn't anticipate that I would call him. Didn't ask me to call him, and I had to look up at the top of the fax to get the uh, fax ID to call him. So. Um, that's the truth of the matter. Um, I have no way of knowing, of course, whether Mel's weaving us a story or not. 
uh, except his word, and uh, I can't imagine why why he'd lie. I, I to be honest with you, and uh, you know, since you're from Reno, and uh, the, the main, if I want to be on the air talking about something, I'd much rather talk about my work with uh, uh, Indian herbal remedies. Uh, that would be the thing that I would be preferred to be talking about. Uh, it just so happens that the, uh, the materials I'm working from are from northern Nevada, from uh, your local Indians out there, and they're the ones that uh, have provided me with the line of research that I'm doing. I have, you know, this whole thing is secondary. You know, but if, if I had a topic I really wanted to speak about, it would be that, that would be huh? it. All right, I understand. All right, uh, east of the Rockies, you are on the air with Mel. Hello. Will, W-T-D-Y, Madison, Wisconsin. Hello, yes, fellas. Hi. Allegedly Hi. Zionists, allegedly anti-religion Zionists, with billions of U.S. dollars profits. What does this have to do with... ...makers and currency future derivatives markets. All right, well, I don't know where he's... He's always going all, all over the place where it has nothing to do with our topic. Uh, first time caller line, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Hi, this is Flo from Vancouver, B.C. Yeah, hi there. Um, I just think your last caller, the female caller, must have a wild imagination herself. But um, I have two questions here. Number one, has he called a psychic by any chance? Or well, into a, that? You know, that is a thought. I mean, it's... It... Look, when uh, after, after you come? know, if I decide, you know, to basically take the money and run, yeah, yeah. I still want to know what's down there. Okay. I want I want some mechanism to know. I mean, my original line of inquiry really was, is this the deepest hole around? I mean, that, that was my original uh, uh, question I put forward. And, uh, yeah. you know, I think I got an answer to that. But now I'd like to know, what the heck is this thing? <laughs> no. So that, that's where okay. I'm coming from now. And, and one way or another, I mean, I'm, I think I'm at the point where I'm open up. Oh, well, my, my beliefs are such that if we had a psychic look at it, a remote viewer, I don't, whatever, Mm -hmm. that I would be willing to accept, you know, what they have to say about this. Mm -hmm. You know, if they, they looked into it and saw what was at the bottom or what was going on over there, mm -hmm. uh, I think at this point I can accept that. Boy, I, I tell you what, I've had to accept in the last couple of days here. I can accept anything <laughs> at this point. All right. Thank yes, you. Sir, I know a really good psychic, and I'm, I know I'm going to be asking her tomorrow. All right. Thank you, dear. Um, can I ask a second question? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, what does he think the odds are of someone going ahead and finding out who he is and Calling the media and well, we've got it. Look, we've had his we've had his full name on the air for one thing. Yeah, I noticed. All right, uh, so Mel, what do you think the odds are that somebody will? I mean, obviously, as a result of the first broadcast, look what's happened. So uh, the media may descend on you, Mel. They very well could, and and as the guy said at the uh, at the road here, it says we already know where you're at. So, well, what are you going to do if the media? I mean, suppose tomorrow K O M O or um, one of the big Seattle uh, broadcasters comes to you uh, and says, "Look, we got a camera crew. We won't, we, tell us where the property is. We want to go out and investigate." I, I suppose if, if they wanted to go there, I would lead them to the uh, to the uh, access road there and say, "Here, I'm out of here. You, know, you take a look. You you talk to these guys here. You find out what's going on, and uh, you know, and then I'll watch it on the news tonight. <laughs> but uh, you won't you won't find me anywhere near that." I hear you. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Yes, yeah, sir. This is a Skip in Sacramento, KSTE. Yes. A couple things for you, sir. The hole that he is talking about, his 80,000 feet, comes up to 15.15 miles deep. Sounds right. The uh, Mohorovistic discontinuity he's talking about came in the International Geophysical Year. I believe that was back in the early 80s. Maybe even the 50s, I'm getting so old, I don't mm -hmm. remember now. It's called Iggy, the International Geophysical Year, where all the world population took part, checking the depth of the, uh, the, uh, of the shelf underneath the oceans and the molten mass down to the core and so on, how deep it was. There was a discontinuity. It wasn't even, and that's why it's called a discontinuity. It was mm -hmm. named after this fellow, Mohorovic. Exactly. Your uh, glue stuff you know, was developed for surgery for smashed spleens and kidneys. It made to glue skin better than anything else. Yeah, well, trust me, it works real well, sir. Thank you very much. It even glues carts into rocks. I, I don't want to talk about it. First time caller line, you're on the air with Mel. Hello. Oh, I think we just missed him. Wild card line, you're on the air with Mel. Good morning. Hi, Art and Mel. Hi. Hello. Aaron calling from Reno. Yes, sir. Um, Good. I, I have a uh, couple of questions and a comment. Mel, just... 
I don't know if anybody's asked you yet, but have you ever seen a UFO out around in that area on your property? No, good question. You know, out, out here, um, you're, you're liable to see all sorts of things, and I myself have not seen anything personally. I mean, this is this is one of those areas that uh, they can get pretty remote in a hurry. Um, you know, uh, Ellensburg is like 30 miles away on either side from the nearest town. Matter, that, of, matter, of, fact, of, matter of fact, Mel, uh, I've got a lot of uh, confirmation of that, faxes and phone calls, people saying it is a very weird area. Yeah. And uh, they've heard stories there about holes. So, you know, this is not that far out. A lot of people are saying, yes, there's a lot of weird stuff going on in that area. West of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Uh, it's Fred from Sitka. Sitka, Alaska. Alaska, all right. Yeah, and uh, just like to say that, uh, geez, I thought the, the days of uh, you'll just disappear ended with the Reagan administration. And uh, Art, I'm very disappointed that you will not be coming to Sitka on your on your Alaska cruise. Well, you're I'm going to be missing out there. We're hitting quite a few cities, sir, but uh, Sitka is not one of them. Uh, sorry about that. East of the Rockies, you're on the air with Mel. Uh, this is Paul in Kansas City, and I want to tell Mel that I believe him entirely, and um, and I think that Jerry Spence idea is a great idea, and it's probably a good story for Linda Moulton Hal to go check out. Uh, I've already uh, given it to Linda, as a matter of fact. Oh, that's great, and um, I th I think if he's told uh, over 10 million people on the air that uh, he's been threatened that they're going to falsely accuse him of. Uh, having a drug farm out there or something, and he got a really good lawyer like Jerry Spence, they would never be able to follow through on that, especially if he had a bunch of media attention like Strange Universe and stuff out there. Well, that was another idea. There's a whole bunch of ideas here on the table. Yeah, I think that I really think he should go for it, and I totally disagree with that lady who thinks he just wants attention. All right. Well, I appreciate the call. Thank you. Uh, I did call Mel, folks. That's the truth. Yeah, he faxed me. But I'm the guy who dug out the number and called him. He didn't really want to go on the air, uh, for the record. Wild card line, you're on the air. Finally, I got through. Hello, Art. Hello, Mel. How Hello. are you? Okay. Uh, M Mel. Yes. Uh, now, with this hole and these people who are on your land, you have to understand, they are listening to this radio program right now. I'm sure. I'm absolutely certain. Of and you also have to understand, these are military spooks. They are doing whatever they're doing right now. And anything that you do through the standard channels like, uh, you know, getting a lawyer or, uh, or, or anything along those lines is going to serve only as a delay tactic. I would suggest to you that you do some research. If it was a plane crash, there has, there is radar coverage of that area, I'm certain. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. There would be a record of it somewhere. Well, unless. If, the, if it's uh, if it's an air if it's an airplane crash, where's the NTSB? Well, it, sir, it, wait a minute. A... Hold on, hold on. Look, I live out here in Nevada, and I can tell you because there's been some experimental planes that have crashed out here. And a, it does not get into the media. B, the military uh, cordons off the entire area, and trust me, you don't get anywhere near it. I know personally that's true. All you need to do is contact uh, one of the aircraft, uh, one of the air traffic controllers for the area, and find out if there's any record of anything in that area at that time. You can also uh, find out. I mean, if it's an air crash, where's the NTSB? If it has anything to do with drugs, where's the DEA or the uh, drug task force for that area, whatever it might be called? Uh, if there is anything to do with Anything else as far as uh, the, the geological properties of the area, you can find all this information out from USGS. You can get satellite photos and infrared. You can get uh, anything you want. Yeah, these are all good ideas, um, although I think the plane crash story is an obvious falsehood. It's a lie. And, it, you know, Mel, again, they told you, look, they could find a drug lab there. So... The plane crash story was obviously a cover, and the story about the lab was obviously a threat. Yeah. Uh, plain and simple. So, my friend, I don't know what you're going to do now. Uh, and I, I guess I'm you gonna, don't know. I'm going to think about it. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to think about. It. I'm going to call the uh, realtor tomorrow for one and ask him. Uh, uh, I would prefer not to talk to him, but talk to someone, you know, 
I would ask them too. Who is making the offer? You have you. you they have yeah. to tell you who's making the offer. Sure. Well, you see, this this property is not for sale. I mean, I don't have a listing out there. So well, I'm yeah, approached. but you you can make an offer on anything, though. Uh, I suppose you could. <laughs> yeah, you can get a realtor and uh, uh, make an offer, and and they will come and uh, give you that offer. So, look, I don't know what else to say or do, Mel. Well, if there's any way I can help you, if there's any media contacts or political contacts I can supply you with that will help when you decide what you're going to do, come to me. If yep. there are any significant further developments that you want, or you get some neighbors who want to come on the air, yep. I'll put them on. If you get any drawings, I'll put them up on the website. I'll do whatever I can do to help you, and I, I feel a little guilty about having solicited you on the air in the first place and causing all this. Well, look, I'm, you know, I'm pretty rattled about this, I have to say, and uh, I'm usually a bit more articulate than I have been, and uh, you know, I, I apologize for that. This look, is people a really are... stressful uh, yeah. situation. No, I understand. People are just nasty, Mel. That's that, all. No, that, that, that's, that's fine, and, and I generally find that usually the uh, uh, people that are the most well-spoken are generally the ones that you really have to watch out for. You know? and, um, I know. I think uh, you know that's always a good thing to bear in mind, and so uh, um, you know I, I got some thinking to do about this art, and I um, you know I appreciate everything that everyone has said. I I think overall I think I've moved forward in this in terms of you know actually being able to resolve this within my mind, and I think for that it was good. Uh, quite honestly, your involvement with this may not. Uh, you know, it, it may be happening now because of your involvement, but it may be happen could be happening a year from now without your involvement. Yeah, and everybody out there ought to ought to consider. You know, something so the, like this could happen to anybody. Ten million people, or how many? How many are out there? They know about this. Uh, Mel, we're out of time. Stay in touch, my friend. Uh, I'll, I'll I'll keep in touch. All right, take care. That's Mel and the story of Mel's hole, and that's the latest. When there's more, you'll hear about it right here.